We thank God for this bright new day. We want to share from the word of God again today. And I urge you wherever you are, feel free to listen. Let's bow our heads and pray. Our Heavenly Father, we glorify your name. One good thing is that we have realized that it is your good will to give us the kingdom. And you have paid the price that we might get to the kingdom. Our Father, we are longing for a mighty revival to sweep across the church. And you have given us a message today that we lubricate that long-awaited revival. We therefore pray today, Lord, that you minister to us through your word. Thy word is truth. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Come with me today to the book of Nehemiah. I'm reading Nehemiah chapter 1 from verse 1. Nehemiah chapter 1 from verse 1 to 4. The words of Nehemiah, the son of Hakaliah, it happened in the month of in the month Kislev, in the 20th year, while I was in Susa, the capital, that Hanani or Hanani, one of my brothers, and some men from Judah came. And I asked them concerning the Jews who had escaped and had survived the captivity and about Jerusalem. They said to me, the remnant there in the province who survived the captivity are in great distress and reproach, and the wall of Jerusalem is broken down, and his gates are burned with fire. Now it came about when I had this word that I sat down and wept and mourned for this. I was fasting and praying before the God of heaven. There was a man called Nehemiah. Nehemiah was taken captive to a foreign land. In the place of captivity, Nehemiah became promoted and he became the king's cupbearer. In those days, it was an enviable position to become a king's cupbearer. But Nehemiah had a burden in his heart. You know, if God will use a man, he will begin by giving him a burden. If there is a burden in your heart, it is a sign that the Lord is about using you for something. And so there was a burden in the heart of Nehemiah. Though he was highly blessed, though he was occupying an enviable position, but there was a great burden in his heart. A burden about the people of God, a burden about the city of God, a burden about what has happened to the people of God. Consequently, he was moody, so to say. Somebody came to him. And uh, when some brethren came from Judah, he began to question them concerning the Jews who had escaped and survived the captivity. He was told, the remnant are there in great distress and reproach. Moreover, the walls of Jerusalem are broken down. In fact, when the Hemiah heard that the walls of Jerusalem have been broken down, his heart became broken because of the broken walls of Jerusalem. His heart became broken because of the broken walls of Jerusalem. And so he began to fast. He began to mourn before the God of heaven. Somebody might ask, what was important about this wall of Jerusalem? You will recall that this wall of Jerusalem, if you turn to Isaiah chapter 6, verses 6 to 7, God says something about this wall, this wall of Jerusalem, that is very, very important, and we need to draw attention to that as we are talking about this particular message. In the book of Isaiah chapter 62, the Bible says from 6, On your walls, O Jerusalem, I have appointed watchmen all day and all night. They will never keep silent. You who remind the Lord, take no rest for yourselves. Give him no rest 
until he establishes and makes Jerusalem a praise in the earth. Now, what does it mean? It is on this wall that they will stay and know when the enemy is approaching. The wall is a stationed place for the watchmen of the city. It is on this wall that the watchmen will stay to know when the enemy are approaching. Now, to Nehemiah, it means if the walls are broken, the security of the land is in jeopardy. If the walls are broken, it means the enemy can come in and play football. I mean, mess up the people. It means when there are no walls, there is a security problem. He began to fast. He began to mourn. And Isaiah said, Oh, Jerusalem, I have set watchmen on your wall. And he said, You who make mention of the Lord, do not keep quiet. Give him no rest. And take no holiday for yourself. Let me tell you, there is no holiday in the spiritual realm if we must accomplish the purpose of God. No holiday in, in the spiritual realm. Because the problem today is that many are on spiritual holiday. Consequently, there is a problem. There is a spiritual kashoko ravaging the church because men have gone on spiritual holiday. Here, he says, give God no rest. God is not interested in rest. He says, take no rest for yourself. And give God no rest till he establishes and makes Jerusalem a place on the earth. I'm taking you on a journey through the scriptures. And if you jump to the book of Ezekiel 22 from 29, the Bible began to say, these people have committed robbery. They have mistreated the poor. There is profanity in the land. Of course, if you get back and if you want to begin from 23 of Ezekiel 22, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, say to her, We are a land that is not cleansed or ran on in a day of indignation. There is a conspiracy of her prophets in her midst, like a roaring lion tearing the prey. They have devoured lives. They have taken treasure and precious things. They have made many widows in the midst of her. Her priests have done violence to my law and have profaned my holy thing. They have made no distinction between the holy and the profane. They have not thought the difference between the clean and the unclean. They hide their eye from my Sabbath and I am profane among them. 27. Her princes within her are like wolves tearing the prey by shedding blood and destroying lives in order to get dishonest gain. And her prophets have smeared white words for them, seeing false visions, divining lies for them, saying, Thus say the Lord, when the Lord has not spoken. Now, look at this passage. There was profanity in the land. There was profanity on the altar. The priests, we are, I mean, taking things for granted, leading the people astray. He said, the people of the land have practiced oppression and committed robbery, and they have wronged the poor and needy, have oppressed the sojourner with, without justice. Now, there was a theological problem, religious problem. Number two, there was political chaos. Number three, there was economic crunch. Now, take it again. Now, who should be suffering? In terms of religious problem, somebody should look for theology. In terms of political upheaval, somebody should look for political scientists. In terms of economic crunch, somebody should look for economists. But look at Let's get back to the scriptures. Verse 30. And I search for a man among them. Who? Economist? Who? Politician? Who? Theologian? He said, I sought for a man among them who will build up the wall, stand in the gap before me for the land, that I should not destroy it, but I found no one. Thus I have poured out my indignation on them, I have consumed them with the fire of my wrath, their way I have brought into their head. What am I saying today? I can hear the Holy Ghost saying, one third, one third, one third. I'm here today to announce an advertisement from the Santum Santum. Advert. There is an advert. One third, one third, one third. And that's my topic today. One third, one third, one third. For this nation, God is looking for somebody. God is looking for a people 
For this country, God is looking for a people. For your local church, God is looking for a people. For this generation, for this generation at this zero hour, God is looking for a people. If you ask me what the time says in the clock of time, I will tell you it is five minutes to twelve. It is five minutes to twelve at the clock of time. That is what I will tell you. It is five minutes to twelve. Very soon it will be twelve o'clock. And when it is twelve o'clock, the curtain shall be drawn. And when the curtain is drawn, behold, terrible things will begin to happen. And God has asked me today to talk about this solemn thing that God is looking for people. One dead, one dead, one dead. A praying people. Listen. Many teach about prayer, but they don't practice prayer. Many people can teach. Every person can teach and teach about prayer, but many don't practice prayer. You, you may not be spiritual to preach. You. Do you know a sinner can preach? After there are people who carry bags. Have you been in the house on a Sunday morning and saw somebody carrying bag to your home? People carry bags, they preach. People can preach anything, but it takes a spiritual man to pray. When I mean prayer, I don't mean the hit and run kind of prayer. There are people who are hasty comers and hasty goers in the presence of God. When they come and knock, before the Lord we say, yes, who is knocking? They are already in the taxi. That's not the kind of prayer that I'm talking about. Somebody may say prayer. I don't mean reading prayer. I don't know. It's not just reading out somebody, something that somebody has written. You know, and you are reading it out. It doesn't come from your heart. You are just reading it out. No. I don't mean the kind of prayer I call to satiate a kind of prayer. That is the heat and run kind of prayer. It's not a kind of prayer that can make things happen. And by the way, long prayer in the public does not mean you are a prayer warrior. You know, there are people when the pastor says, Bro, please, can you close us in prayers? If they were standing, they would say, Let me demonstrate to this audience that I am a prayer warrior. They say, Jesus, 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 five minutes. Father, we remember the leper colony. We remember this. We thank you, thank you, thank you to another five minutes. I mean, the pastor has asked you to just summarize so that the congregation could go. But you begin to pray from Jericho to Kafanchan, Kafanchan to, to Sokoto. And before you come back, people are already shaking. It's now, a prayer warrior believes in long secret prayers, but short public prayers. And let me say, a long prayer in public is as a result of short prayer in secret. A long prayer in public is as a result of short prayer in secret. When a man has had intercourse with Jehovah in the secret, when he comes in the open, it becomes prayers of decree, and Jehovah will ratify the prayers. But when a man begins to go from this to the other one, not to south, you know he's trying to gather momentum. May I crave your indulgence to begin to define prayer again. What is prayer? I begin to see prayer as a disinfectant. Prayer is a disinfectant. It purifies the air of contagious demons. Yes, it purges the air of territorial demons. Let me say this. Organize a singing competition. The devil wouldn't bother. If I, while you are singing, he will be present to dance. One thing about music is that God likes music and Satan likes music also. But when you organize a prayer meeting, you are directly organizing something that is directly against the kingdom of darkness and be sure that the devil will oppose it. What am I saying? Prayer is a disinfectant. I don't believe I should pack out of the yard because of a witch or wizard. If you say you are born again and you are claiming you want to pack out of the yard because of a witch, a wizard you have quashio called christianity you have quashio called christianity oh yes the witch should pack out because of you the witch should become uncomfortable because of you because when power means power the lesser power will bow to the superior power listen that is power when you pray when you pray that de demon that witch should become uncomfortable what is prayer? Prayer is weakness leaning on omnipotence. Weakness leaning on omnipotence. And I see that 
the secret of success in Christianity is prayer. I see a language in the church. People say, does it end in prayer? And I've been looking for people who will stay one month without praying. Let's know what will happen to them. You know, if you stay one full month without praying at all, at the end of one month, we shall come to celebrate your spiritual obituary. Because your soul cannot prosper in the neglect of prayer. You can prosper. It is the key in the morning, save as somebody, and the boat at night. Key in the morning, boat at night. Oh yes, prayer is entering into the Holy of Holies, the Santum Santorum. Prayer is entering into the Holy of Holies. And it takes a holy man, it takes a holy woman to get into the Holy of Holies. That's why a sinner cannot pray. A sinner can say prayer, Father, he can read the prayers. Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, our King, you can pick prayers, what I call picking your words. But to pray, flowing from your heart as a child, approaching the Father, say, Father, I bless you. I give you the glory. I worship you. You are Lord. You are King. You don't have that boldness. Because the Bible says, God's hand is not shut in that he cannot deliver. His ears are not heavy that he cannot hear. But your sins have separated between you and your God that he can no longer hear. Listen, prayer is spiritual oxygen. Biologically speaking, you can't survive without oxygen. And so, you cannot live without prayer. Praying is to go to the big nose of God. While he's breathing out, you are breathing. He breathes out. He says, mm, Lord. He breathes out. He says, yeah, Lord. Any day you go to breathe in from the mouth of God, it will be victory, victory throughout. When you refuse to pray, you stop breathing. And when you stop breathing, your spiritual obituary is at the corner. When you refuse to pray, that's why your condition is like this. You are suffering from a disease I call spiritual leanness. There is this leanness in your spirit. You are very lean. You've stopped praying. You've stopped knocking at the throne. You've stopped knocking at the throne of God. But listen, prayer is fuel and oil. Show me a car that will move out in the morning without checking the oil and fuel. Unfortunately today, there are preachers who have knocked spiritual engine. Yes. There are lay leaders in the churches who have knocked spiritual engine. This is a revival message. And it is just as it is. And if you want God to begin to do something in your life, so that you will join in the group that will usher in the new wave of revival we are expecting, you better begin to think about your life today. Spiritual leanness. Now, have you knocked spiritual engine? Why do people knock spiritual engine? They preach and preach and preach, but no time to go to the filling station. They judge cases, judging cases from 6 p.m. till 1 midnight. Nobody will move for adjournment. Judging cases, but no time to go to the filling station. What do I mean by going for the filling station? To pray is to go to the filling station. Show me a preacher who preaches. And also, he preaches and he goes to the filling station. I tell you, his head will lack no oil. There will be perpetual anointing upon his head. Show me a man who knows, a committee, a group, who can go to the filling station. When they give out, they can refuel. Do you know our problem? We have given out. We have given out, but we've not gone to the filling station for refueling. That's our problem. And I can hear the Holy Ghost crying. Who will pray? One third, one third, one third. The present condition of the church is because nobody's praying. Oh yes, if we begin to do a serious prayer, and let me say this, if revival must come, somebody must pray in revival. Revival is a child of many prayers, or much prayer. Revival is a child of prayers. If revival must come, we must begin to pray. Because when the church begins to pray, anything can happen at any time. When we begin to pray, anything can happen at any time. Prayer is the food of the Holy Ghost. The delicious food you can cook for the Holy Ghost is to resort to a corner to pray. I see prayer self as flogging the devil. To pray is to flog the devil. Like I tell you, I've never seen anything Satan opposes like prayer meeting. He may not oppose singing competition. He may not oppose committee meetings. Yes, where you judge cases. The devil may not oppose that. It may be an opportunity for him. But to organize prayer, ah, Hey, watch out for an attack from him. 
Because organized prayer is to lead a holy rebellion against the kingdom of darkness. To organize prayer is to lead a holy rebellion against the kingdom of darkness. Yes, I even see prayer as spiritual fertilizer. I see prayer as spiritual fertilizer. Show me a place where souls are not repenting. If the people of God can go to fertilize that place, they will reap souls out of that place. Let me share this testimony with you. There was a place in that church nobody was growing. Even of new converts coming, backsliders, people were backsliding and getting out of the church. The church was decreasing in attendance. But one day, three Christians, I didn't say pastor, three members of that church, they had a burden. They went into the vestry, that is a room inside the church, and said, God, people are backsliding in this congregation instead of people coming in. God, we will not come out of this room until you do something in this church. They went to wrestle with God. For one day, they refused to see this car. For two days, they refused to see this car. For three days, they refused to see this car. On the fourth day, they came out. When they came out, they went and hired benches, expecting visitors. But let me tell you, when it was time for the church service, no visitor came. No visitor came. But that was not the end of the story. When it was time to preach, the pastor opened the usual Bible. Why am I calling it the usual Bible? That is, the pastor had been preaching from that Bible, from that pulpit, and nothing had been happening. But because a prayer in the pew can change a message on the pulpit, a prayer in the pew, let me tell you, the best way to change a church is by prayer. I see people reading rebellion. I see people saying, Pastor, you must not preach or we carry you out of this place. That is a carnal method. Listen, a carnal pastor cannot stand before a praying congregation. What am I saying? When the church begins to pray, Ali Krija Dickens and elders can resign on their own accord. When the church begins to pray, when the church begins to pray, a pastor who doesn't want to flow with the spirit can resign on his own accord because the power of God has come. So, hey, don't join the group that will follow the carnal method. Go the prayer way. Go the prayer way. Let revival come. When revival comes, when revival comes, great things will begin to happen. I mean, abandoned property in the church shall be recovered. What am I saying? We need the revival. But the Holy Ghost is saying, I want people of prayer. Let me get back to what I was saying. Now, the three believers. When the pastor opened the usual Bible, the supernatural became natural. What do I mean? The glory came down. Do you know what happened? Before you knew it, every member of the church began to roll on the floor. Ah, strange. People were passing by and they saw church members rolling on the floor. They went into the city, rang an emergency bell and they said, if you have a relation in this church, come for a rescue operation. For the pastor is busy slaying his members. There was a mighty rush. People rushed to the church, trooped to the church to see the pastor who was slaying his members. But nobody knew that that was the Holy Ghost method of causing that church to grow. Not just by arithmetical progression, but by geometrical progression. Right now, People surrounded the church building to see the slain pastor. God looked down from heaven and saw them. Glory. Do you know what happened? God rent heaven. That is, he opened heaven, released his power. Friend, my dear listener, have you seen the power of God throwing somebody inside through the window? I have seen it. I have witnessed it. Power came down through the window. Through the door. I don't mean windows and doors with buckleary proof. No, that's not what I mean. Open windows and doors. You know, in some country, people live on self-made prisons. Now, power of God threw them inside. They joined in the chorus of rolling on the ground. To cut the long story short, none of them left without becoming members of that church. None of them left without becoming members of that church. That was how that church grew. What was the secret? Three Christians. Three Christians, they prayed. 
they sought God. They said, God, move. We don't want to see the sky until you do something in this church. Listen, you are responsible for whatever is happening in your church. You have never prayed. You gossip more than you pray. You talk about it more than you pray. And until we cease talking and begin to pray something great, something glorious, something dramatic, something heavenly will not begin to happen in our churches. Prayer is a spiritual fertilizer. Yes, anywhere where souls are headed. With prayer, prayer can set your heart aflame. Prayer. What is prayer? Prayer is exhaling the spirit of man and inhaling the spirit of God. As healing the spirit of man and inhaling the spirit of God. It is the pulse of life. If you get to the hospital, some of the first thing they will ch check, especially if you're an emergency, is to check your pulse. Ask your neighbor right here. Check your prayer pulse. Your pulse. How you pray determines how lively you are spiritually. Oh yes. The problem of this generation is prayerlessness. Prayerlessness. We are too busy to pray. Let me tell you, in this generation we have fast food, fast this, fast the other one. If that one comes out into spiritual things, we run into trouble. Because some of us are already into spiritual coma. Some are already into spiritual coma. And it takes revival to wake them up. It takes a mighty wave of revival to wake them up. The problem is prayerlessness. And I know that a prayerless Christian is a powerless Christian. And when you are powerless, you become a football in the hand of the devil. Stand by, stand by. God has something more to say as we turn over to the other side. Yes, prayerlessness is powerlessness. In fact, a prayerless Christian is a crooked Christian. A prayerless Christian is a backsliding Christian. Backsliding cannot begin the day you stole or committed fornication. No, it started the day you lost your prayer life. The first attack on you is for Satan to steal your prayer life. If he succeeds in stealing your prayer life, then he can come in through other sins and he can get over you. What am I saying? I'm saying this to say that if we stop praying, we start sinning. And if we start sinning, we stop praying. There's no way you can do the two. You pray, you sin. No, 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 no. If you stop praying, you start sinning. And if you start sinning, you will stop praying. Yes. Look at our family. Many people are no more prepared to gather their families to pray, even among Christians. You gather, the family becomes video-centric. Yes, video becomes the center of the home. You can worship for three hours, part one, part two, all at a stretch, for six hours or four hours. But to pray now, it becomes difficult. Everybody will sleep. No wonder we have dreams. Snake pursuing us, lion pursuing uh, skeleton pursuing us in the dream. What am I saying? I'm saying this to say that the effect of no family altar is devastating. When you don't have a watchman on the wall of your church, when there is no watchman on the wall of your family, that is number one victory for the devil. A prayerless man does not enjoy the continuous presence of God. Look at the churches. You know, in every church, there are two members, participants and observers. Let me ask you, who are you in your church? observer or participant answer who are you are you an observer in your church or a participant yes there are people when the glory is moving in the church that is the time they will move out to go and ease themselves that time that the glory is moving out as if the devil is pushing them say get out some of them will get outside and when they get only to remove their hair tire and they put it back and come inside yes a, when a prayerless man is in the church when the glory is moving it looks as if he's already in hell I'm a preacher, but let me say this. It's easier to preach than to pray. Somebody can stand and preach for two hours, three hours, non-stop. Ask the same person to pray for two hours. It's easier to sing than to pray. It's easier to sing than to pray. It's even easier to hold a committee meeting for 24 hours 
day and night it's easier to do that than to pray it's even easier to run about for god than to pray to run about from nigeria to this run about from country to country than to settle down and pray Ghana people can do all these things but they hate prayers Ghana people hate prayer and a fruitless walk a prayerless walk is a fruitless walk when you don't back up a walk a crusade a revival whatever it is with prayer don't expect any result let me tell you sometimes we begin to blame the condition now let me tell you the, 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 the problem we have when we fail to pray when we fail to pray spiritual gifts will not manifest we even begin to have orthodox service in pentecost in some pentecostal churches orthodox service in some pentecostal church we have dryness when we cease to pray when we fail to pray we will bury more people than we should bury do you know prayer can stop certain deaths that is why in nehemiah nehemiah was weeping he says because the walls of jerusalem are broken down and god says oh jerusalem i have set watchmen on your way he said you who make mention of the lord don't keep quiet give him no rest give him no rest yes give him no rest give him no rest when we fail to pray satan can come steal people away but when we begin to pray prayer can stop certain death when we fail to pray our testimony will be filled with what the devil is doing some people will say pastor i have a testimony and they come out before the congregation and they say brethren i want to tell you what the devil is doing in my family i came out in the morning the devil i wanted to eat the devil when i went to bath, the devil when i was on my way the devil they will cry the one that touches my heart is a fellow chief articles in the church we're joining the chorus of crying why are they crying crying for what the devil is doing to them crying because of what the devil is doing when we return to prayers when we begin to pray our testimonies will give the devil a headache when the church begins to pray more sick people will be healed it is the will of God that our churches will become healing centers. That God will plant a spiritual borehole in our congregation so that out of these churches shall flow rivers of power, rivers of revival, so that people will jump into this river and be healed. They will jump into it and be delivered. When we fail to pray, sinners will no more be afraid of Zion. Do you know right now, sinners are no more afraid of Zion. A sinner can maneuver us and get baptized. A sinner can maneuver us and become a full member. A sinner can maneuver us and even go to theological school. A sinner can maneuver us and be elected even as a deacon or elder or committee member. And he becomes ambassador for Satan in that committee. What am I saying? Because, because we are not praying. Oh God. Let that day come back. When sinners come to altar call when nobody has called them. When somebody will step into the church and the glory will grip him. The glory will grip him. Let that day come back. Hey, do you know that there's no more tears? Tears are gone. Messages are no more preaching in some quarters. There are no more preaching. The Bible says in us, Peter spoke and the team pricked them and they shouted, what shall we do? when messages no longer prick people when messages no longer prick hearts then we are becoming the church is becoming another cemetery another cemetery let revival come and this revival can only come when we begin to pray when everybody begins to pray and i begin to tango i begin to tango though there are people who are praying but listen god is saying i want a man on the gap i want a man who can pray i want a man who can seek me who can seek my faith when we begin to pray sinners will be afraid of zion we have a problem in our prayer prayer can melt a strong place only prayer can cause earthquake in the kingdom of darkness only prayer church politicking will not solve our problem when we resort to prayer we shall see a glorious manifestation when we resort to prayer the glory will come ha huh? when glory comes backsliders on our pulpit will either be revived or changed yes when revival sweeps across the church unbelieving believers among the gospel artists will either repent or they surrender their instruments when the glory comes back to the church 
people who occupy positions in the church but are not broken but are not revived people who are sinning and still handling holy things the bible says ye who be the vessels of the lord be ye holy how many today bearing the vessels of the lord are holy oh god we are are we we are are we we are are we let the church come up let the church begin to pray let the spirit of prayer come afresh upon the church because any moment we begin to pray any moment we begin to pray the devil will think of going on transfer the devil will begin to think of going on transfer oh yes sinners will become afraid of Zion yes you want to accomplish much for God get into prayers prayer is an open ministry some people say I don't know what to do for God you are a liar there are things you can do for God you are a liar who told you, you don't know what to do for God it's a black lie there is something to do for God all revivals come as a result of prayer there are churches that organize revival meeting everybody will eat and sleep waiting for the evangelist to come with a portfolio full of revival you will sleep you will eat yes on that day the evangelist will come with a portfolio full of revival while going he will pack back the revival inside the portfolio and go that is why after revival no revival remains but show me a church that will stage a program and then the church will begin to swim in the ocean of prayer i assure you before the evangelist comes revival will begin and as the evangelist goes he cannot go with the revival prayer has no substitute money cannot take the place of prayer no in as much as we need naira millionaires dollar millionaires and the safer millionaires in the church we also need prayer millionaires victory on the pulpit is not one it's not gotten by the opening prayer before the sermon. there was a man called a man called Duncan after a powerful message people kept him and said what's your secret he said 13 hours consecutive prayers you know our problem many of us even preachers are too busy to pray now we'll go from this meeting to the other meeting from here to there flying from here to there but no time for God no time for prayer let me say this in this age of clamoring for degrees in this age of clamoring for degrees let me say this theology minus neology will end in head knowledge theology without neology we end in head knowledge but when we begin to pray prayer will release the supernatural degree can never take the place of power and revival degree can never take the place of revival yes let's get back to a school of neology there is a clarion call today every man every man let that day come back when musicians got their songs on their knees right now somebody can bring these pieces and the other pieces hallelujah amen they bring everything bring combi bring rice bring beans into the message oh yes but let that day come back when musicians will be on the mountain seeking god and god will give them song that song that god gave you sing it anywhere and the glory will move in the congregation they are a chorister when did you sing last and somebody received the holy ghost in the congregation when did you sing last and the glory took over the church when did you now we are interested in the technicalities of the song why the spirituality is lacking next why will it not happen after choir practice we close it with a gossip meeting why how can god move when have we devoted time to pray when have we devoted time instead of slandering to seek god a teacher a preacher what am i saying people are not praying people are not praying that is why the devil is working over time the devil has bribed the church not to pray but i still hear the holy ghost saying wanted 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 the praying people oh that the church will pray that the church will bring down the glory there is no other way of bringing down the glory except prayer there is no other way of bringing down the glory there is dryness there is powerlessness there is wretchedness ah some have lost their former glory do you notice some people their new name is a they are managing but the main glory has departed ezekiel said i saw the glory of god moving out through the window to some people the glory has departed why is there some don't pray number one is let sleeping some have the gift of looking at television from the first national anthem to the last national anthem every day oh yes all right in this time of cable 
some people will look at cable look at cable until cable will begin to look at them you look at cable and after looking at you know cable will turn around and begin to look at you and you sleep up and some people are at the end of the end of in jesus name amen they bundle themselves upon their bed no wonder in the night you have nightmares they will pursue you skeleton pursuing you mad dog pursuing you you come to the preacher for deliverance which deliverance deliver yourself first from that demon that influence of making television the god of your life making video the god of your life what is a god god is anything that takes the place or seat of god in your life it has become your god your idol your idol oh yes when the time of god is given to television and video it is takes the time of god what am i saying yes a prayer warrior sleeps while others are awake and gets awake while others are sleeping because in the night the lord will come sometimes an invisible hand will touch you like this and when you begin a song will begin in your spirit and god may tell you there is a battle somewhere there is a battle somewhere and you begin to pray and when you want to pray two voices may speak to you one may tell you remember you are traveling tomorrow if you pray now drivers will carry you across your destination another voice may tell you sleep look all your eyes are inside your skull if you pray now will anybody marry you at all these things can discourage you and put you and make you disobey god god says you are my battle axe let me tell you sometimes the lord may wake you up give you a burden for you to pray for a brother in need a brother surrounded by assassins god may wake you up give you a burden like i said at the beginning of this message when god will use a man he begins by giving you a burden and when you follow that body when you follow it prayer body vision this three they go together get back to habakkuk study it very well prayer body vision prayer body vision prayer body vision let's sleep it can be a barrier yes sometimes god may send what i may call anointed mosquito in a special cell to work you know you flit your heart as nay the anointed mosquito will penetrate come to your ears I'm going to sing, oh, come on, bro, 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 come on, bro. And then, you know, you write the bid. No, you can't kill it. It's sent to wake you up so that you can pray. You can do your function. What are we saying, really? I'm saying this to say that God wants you to pray. He said, Thou watchman, Jerusalem, I have positioned the watchman. Oh, the Lord is looking for a watchman. A watchman. Many, many years ago, a man was a watchman, he was employed. And one day, he called him his master and said, Master, child, please don't move out tomorrow. Last night, I had a terrible dream and revelation where assassins came upon you. Please don't go out. If not, they will kill you. At the end of the day, the master sacked him. Why did he sack him? Here was a man who was supposed to watch. But he left the thing and slept. And before you sleep to the level that you will dream, you will dream. That means a serious sleep. So that man was no more qualified to be a watch night. What am I saying today? I'm saying this to say, many have slept and slept and missed some, a lot. What am I saying? Another barrier to prayer is sin. Proverbs 28, 9 says, He who hardens his heart from hearing the Lord, even his prayers shall be abomination. You are going to pray a house? Beware, beware. Let me tell you, native doctors are no more living in touch houses in the village. Do you know where they are living now? In prayer houses native doctors they are no more in the touch houses they are now coming in the form of prayer houses they will see vision you know divination hmm, hmm. as i was praying i saw a rat pursuing a lion come and fast for 40 days or seven days banana fast if you cannot fast pay us so that we can fast on your behalf let's know why a rat was pursuing a lion that is the psychology of retaining you let me tell you today who are you? Who are you? The Bible said in Psalm 66, 18. If I behold iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Even if I fast for 20 days, the Lord will not hear me. If I refuse to repent, my prayer becomes nonsense. Now, you see, there are things you can't understand. How can a woman who is a prostitute open a prayer house? She has children all over the place, but no husband. Yeah, people are trooping to her home to see vision to receive this or the other one listen and people are the same people are flowing let me tell you another barrier to prayer is faithlessness overeating and oversleeping there are people who are food bulldozers food bulldozers and sleep bulldozers when they begin to sleep even if you wake them up if you carry them out they'll begin to snore if you wake them up to eat 
they can mistakenly put their you know food in the washing water because of sleep and i see an insult imagine somebody kneeling down to pray and you are sleeping on your knees it is an insult to god to sleep on your knees it's an insult to god it's a serious offense to sleep on your knees imagine you looking for an audience with the head of state having passed through the regular protocols through the asoro you were granted an audience with the head of state and he said thank you excellency for granting me this opportunity what i have come to tell you uh, you begin to sleep before him you better be in prison for wasting his excellency's time but a busier than the head of state has given us prayer privilege instead of intercessor stairs around you we have sleep bulldozers saliva where are you sitting on your knees? some people have computerized their legs when they are sleeping they are still making movements and the ushers will be confused Another barrier to prayer is malice. There's no way you can have something against somebody and you come to pray. Wandering thoughts. Sometimes when you need them to pray, one voice will tell you, remember this appointment. You didn't cover your pot of soup. Remember the other one. The devil has done this so that you can hurry over the prayers. Hurry over the prayers. Another thing is a talkative. A talkative cannot be a prayer warrior. When you talk too much, there's no way you can talk too much and pray. When you talk too much, all the things you have said will come and build a cloud above you and you cannot penetrate in prayer. Lack of burden. If you don't have a burden, how can you pray? Let me challenge you. All things are possible to he who can pray. Jesus said, you don't have because you have not asked. Up till now, you have not asked. Ask and it shall be given to you. Knock, it shall be opened. Seek and you shall find. All things are possible to he who can pray. Do you know? With prayer, with prayer, with prayer, it does not matter whether you went to school or not. With prayer, God will make something out of you. He will make something out of you. To neglect this private prayer is a low cost which devours the strength of the church. If we begin to neglect prayer, it's a low cost that will devour the strength of the church. Time we fellows us to get into men and women who pray. Biblical men and people who lived, who prayed and sought God. Abraham had a prayer habit. The Bible said he will always stand to that place where he always met with the Lord. In Genesis 19, 27. He, God does not hide his plans from him because he was a prayerful man. Let me tell you, when we begin to have watchmen in this city, watchmen in our nation, watchmen, I tell you, God will begin to reveal secrets unto us. When we have a problem, we are too busy to pray. When we are too busy to pray, God will be too busy to manifest. When we are too busy to give God time, the glory will not come. Look at us. Moses, his prayer brought victory against the Amalekites. Yes, yes, Moses was a man of prayer. He stood and God answered the prayer. He fasted till the glory of God reflected on him. What do I talk? Look at Elijah. Elijah locked heaven for three and a half years. Pocketed the key. He put the key inside his pocket and opened it at will. It was a man of like passion. Let me tell you, I see you, there are things God wants to make out of you. You can do better than you are doing. Your problem is this. Get back to God. There is a calling. God is knocking. Who will go? He wants to pour his special anointing upon you today. A special my heart desire is at the end of this message. An anointing of prayer will come upon you that you begin to pray as you have never done before by the way there may be some listeners here maybe you had a prayer covenant with god you used to wake up certain time in the night to pray you used to wake up you had a covenant with god a certain day in the week you used to fast you had a covenant with god but right now materialism pursuit for vain glory has taken your covenant with god Look at you. The other day, you didn't know you slept without praying. The other day. Now, God has asked me to tell you that unusual things are beginning to happen in your life because you have broken your prayer covenant. And before God, do you know your name? Covenant breaker. Covenant breaker. Unusual things are beginning to happen. And they will begin to happen more in your life because you failed to keep your prayer covenant. Oh, yes. Nehemiah refused to be sidetracked. Esther took a risk. He said, pray for me. And after prayer, I will take the risk. David said, when I remember you in my night watches, 
meaning that he was a man of prayer daniel prayed three times he was an administrator he was a statesman he had a, a, a he was he was at the corridors of power yet he prayed three times he, he disciplined himself when you are too busy to pray god will be too busy to manifest yes when you are too busy to pray god will be too busy to manifest i've told you about the three prayer warriors who released the power of god men who walked before us john wesley was praying for hours every day yes there are other people look at susanna wesley she had 19 children 19 yet she made time to spend with jesus every day god where are we how are we where are we where are we where are we the holy ghost says one third one third one third he said and i sought for a man who will stand at the gap on behalf of the land that i might not destroy it but i could not see have you lost your prayer life has the devil taken over your prayer life are you now being messed up you know there is now a vacuum in your heart yes you shout you sing but you know there is a vacuum in your spirit no more time too busy too busy to pray too busy to seek god too busy get back get back get to your post get back to your post get back to your post do you know why the glory has it listen god was using you before power was upon your life anointing was upon your life the holy ghost wants me to ask you now where is your yesterday where is your yesterday when you were in glory where is your yesterday when power was upon your life where is your yesterday when you preach and the glory came down are you trying to cover up are you trying to manage look at it fell the day your prayer life was taken away by the devil it fell god is still saying one third one third one third. i want to do something in generation i want to release my power i'm releasing a new a last wave of revival but 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 somebody must pray somebody must usher in the revival you can be the man you can be the man god yes even now god can use you let's bow our heads in prayer Yes, you can lift up your hands and say, Spirit of the living God, come afresh upon me. The Bible said it shall come to pass that I will pour upon the house of Jacob the spirit of supplication and prayer. Spirit of the living God, come afresh. Come afresh. Come afresh upon me. Let the noise in a prayer. Let the noise in a prayer come afresh upon me. Can we begin to repent for our prayerlessness? We begin to pray that God will send the spirit of prayer, the spirit of intersection, that we begin to pray and seek God as never before. Only this, only by doing this, can revival come. Yes, fill the gap in your church. Fill the gap in your family. Fill the gap everywhere. The Lord is calling you. Get back to your duty. Get back to your assignment. 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 Give the devil no chance. It is five minutes to two. It is five minutes to two. Our Father, we bless you. I give you the glory. I give you the honor. Worship you for your greatness. Oh God. We have lost our covenant. We broke our prayer covenant with you. We begin to pray, Father, for your message. Some of us have started sleeping on, on our knees. We've abandoned your duty. We've abandoned your assignment. We pray for your forgiveness. From now, Lord, renew us. Renew us with your power. Let your strength come afresh. Let your anointing come afresh, oh God. From now, let a new wave come over us. Spirit of the living God, come. Come, Holy Ghost. Come, Spirit of prayer. Quicken us. Quicken our lives. Thank you for doing that to God. That from today, the fire of prayer will begin to burn in our hearts. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. Give me oil in my lungs. Keep me burning. Give me oil in my lungs. I pray. Give me oil in my lamp, keep me burning. Give me oil till the break of day.